specifics because the worker hasn't given me a write-up on what's, what was going on when she got there. Okay. okay. We were just called and stated that you were going to be incarcerated and that you had a nine-month-old child. I think once the worker got there, if I have my facts correctly because I hadn't talked to the worker, by the time she got to City Hall, you were gone, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And your child was still there. Well, this, one of the city workers, I was going to call my aunt okay. to, to pick, them, pick my baby up, okay. and I was refused a call. And Tamika uh, okay. Sykes said, I will take your baby. I okay. said, all right, will you be able to? Because I can make the phone call. Okay. And then Tamika Sykes said, sure. Okay. So evidently they put her job in a position where she couldn't watch okay. my son. But I wouldn't have left my son there without okay. calling, so I wanted to pick my son up. But they did not allow me to do that. I called my son from college. He's my closest relative okay. to come get him and his brother because okay. my, my other son had got to school to 5 o'clock. When the worker called me, I said, well, you need to go over to where you're at because whoever was there was saying, well, she said I could watch the child. But see, we can't do that unless we talk to you because we don't want to get say, oh, well, she said, the mom said she could go with this and we haven't talked to you, and then you come back and go, wait a minute, I didn't say that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I believe the worker left there and went to where you were at, and you indicated that you had made arrangements, yada, yada, yada. Right. To cover the worker, I think she was going to do a safety plan, mm -hmm. but that was just to protect the worker so that she talked to you and everything was okay. Okay. So what we usually do on those instances, you make plans. Mm -hmm. We're good with that. Okay. We'll put it in, but we'll screen it out because we have to put all kids of reports into our system to mm -hmm. show that the worker went out. Mm -hmm. So it, you won't have a report. Okay, so when I do a DHR check for future employment, that's not going to show up on my no. own case. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay. You had never had a DHR report before, have you? No, but they keep calling DHR on me. This, the last time I was arrested on a false charge in which I was trying to get the complaint answered, Officer Kaiser threatened to call DHR on my children then, and I was there to ask about the complaints that I made on the office and wouldn't allow me to call my attorney or call somebody to get my child. And then I do the, they do the same thing to me yesterday. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Don't, don't be upset. But you, you don't have a report on this one because you made arrangements for your children. But I made arrangements when I was under arrest, or why would they have called you? I don't know. I don't know, dear. I don't know. But once we get a call, well, it's like, okay, in that report, we got to go out. So in the report, do I know who called? I can't disclose that because it's confidential. Where can it be disclosed to? So can an attorney get it? No. By law, the Alabama state law says we, you know, need, we don't tell anybody. The only way it's ever disclosed uh -huh. who called is if, if the case ever, let's say if it was a sexual abuse case, mm -hmm. and let's say whoever called has to testify mm -hmm. for the person alleged responsible because he's got to go to trial, then yes, that client can be a subpoenaed to come to court to report what they know. But other than that, so anybody can just call randomly with some yeah, random I, charge about yeah, your child? Yes. People call up here all the time anonymously. Mm -hmm. And this is the way the state looks at it. And people can't be prosecuted for that. If I live across the street from you, mm -hmm. and I think something's going on, mm -hmm. I can call the department and say, hey, I live across the street from Betty Sue, mm -hmm. and this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I want to remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. We're going to send a worker out mm -hmm. to determine whether it's true or not. Okay. The department feels like we would rather go out and it be nothing than never go out and it be something. Oh, okay. Because people are scared that they're going to be prosecuted. So if, can I get an anonymous number? The hotline is there a hotline for us to call? There is a 1-800 number. I don't know of a heart. <laughs> yeah. Can we I do the intake, though. Steve just call our intake. People. Yeah, you can call up here intake. Yeah. Eight seven four. One four zero zero. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Eight seven four one four zero zero. Okay, thank you. So either there's several ways you can report abuse. Mm -hmm. Either call up here, mm -hmm. or there's a one eight hundred number. For okay. the life of me, I work for DHR, but I don't ever call it. I it's got with you. the state office. I got you. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that my children wasn't in jeopardy. No. And if so, what if Angela Benjamin didn't show up yesterday? What was going to happen to my child? Well, the person would have come to where you're at, and we would have tried to make help you make arrangements. And we would have stayed there. I mean, we couldn't have transported your child anywhere. Yeah, I did. My child was actually put in VHR's who, who, car. Who put her in there? Miss Paraphor. But My was son was in there. Was law enforcement with her? I, I mean, know. Did, who instructed her to do that? She told Miss Benjamin that she could not take my child. And they put my child in the car, her and maybe my child, because, maybe and Miss Benjamin she, left the, with the child together. So my child was in custody, in my opinion. No, she wasn't. He was. Well, 
I believe that was because of the fact that even though Miss Benjamin said it, we needed to get confirmation from you. But I, I gave, I, when I left them with there, the police told me, give the child to someone. I gave it to the lady. So why would I need secondary confirmation when I left my child with someone capable and gave them instructions and call? The DHR was called and the worker wasn't there when you did that. She had to get confirmation. Right? So, because you were already gone. Right. So they just take you to jail and don't give you opportunity to find... Well, sweetie, I don't have anything to do with that. I'm just asking basic rules. So... At that time, know. they just take you to jail, and they don't let you get an opportunity I'll to secure a placement for your child. I'm just trying to, if you don't know, that's good. I don't. That's fine. That's just, law enforcement. That's mm -hmm. not me. Okay. So when DHR is called, as I was told before, I, I, I saw a drug bus one morning, and it was a lot of little kids that I knew on the street. And I said, why aren't y'all calling DHR? They said, oh, yeah, that's procedure. It happens after the arrest. I wasn't even, I was undetained. I wasn't even under arrest when I handed my child over. So I'm trying to figure out what justification, because it had been a lie. Because at the time that you were called, I wasn't even downtown quite yet. Well, I don't know where you were at when we got called. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, basically, people can call and the police can detain your child and put them in the DHR code. Band, even though you made arrangements with people to watch your child. Yeah, because technically, when we go, let's, let me give you an example. So they didn't give me the opportunity to discuss anything with DHR, so they didn't give me the right to speak with DHR. So they took that right away from me, and that's what I'm basing all on I, the all information. I, all I can attest to is that, and ask you, when the worker got to where we were told to come, were you there? No. Okay. They, they didn't tell me they was calling DHR. Okay. They didn't give me the opportunity. I kept saying, let me call someone. My phone had died, because I was recording the whole incident of the day on my phone. Uh -huh. So my phone was in the middle of recording, was as evidence. So I asked the city clerk to let me use their phone. I called my attorney. Then after I called my attorney, they told me I couldn't make any more phone calls. I said I wanted to call someone to come get my son. And because the only person thing I could think of was my son, and he's not in school yet, and I said, oh, he's coming from Troy, which really he wasn't in Troy, but he goes to school in Troy. They freaked out. He still would have gotten there in enough time to get my son. So I'm just trying to figure out at that point when I could have called my aunt, who was 10 minutes away, they did not allow me to do that, but they went further to call you and said I was under arrest, and I was still under detainment at the time, I'm supposed. Because I didn't even find out I was under arrest until I got to the department, because that's when they told me I was under arrest with extra charges. Oh, when you got to the police station? Yeah, I don't know. All I know is when the worker got there, you weren't there. Okay. But in normal pickups, we don't go out on a pickup by ourselves. The police weren't there. They didn't come with her. She came by herself. I don't know. I don't know what procedure. You know, so I that's don't what know I'm asking. Procedure. What's the normal pickup procedure from this perspective? The normal pickup procedure is we get a call, we go out and assess. Depending on what's going on, we make a determination what we're going to do. Law enforcement has their own rules and regulations, and I don't know what those are. So I cannot speak mm -hmm. about what their stuff is. Right. Okay? All I can say is what DHR usually does. Right. Because of the fact that you were not there, and, and Miss Benjamin was there, and even though Miss Benjamin was saying she gave the child to me, we still have to confirm that with you because we don't ever want to be told by a client, I didn't make that arrangement. And then it's on us because we believed whoever it was. So that's why she came to you to confirm that. So that. So why did she have to put my baby in a car? How else? Well, how else was she going to find out? She could have called. Why would my child have to be held in custody when she could have just made the phone call? Well, you're saying we were held in custody, but technically she wasn't, or your child was wasn't. He, uh, he was, because well, he wasn't released he to was, anyone. Well, you say was, but technically he was not. Oh, okay, because he wasn't released to the people I gave him to. So when y'all came in, then he was in custody, because he was not in my custody, and he wasn't in the custody of the people. For I'm him just, to be in custody with us, we have to have paperwork. Which I did not. Which we did not. Okay. So he wasn't in custody. All you right. keep saying that, what? but he was not. When, when I'm arrested and they put me in a car and take me off and tell me I can't get in the, any other person's vehicle, that's in custody. It might not be the definition for DHR, but legally but you not are about you. in custody. You were just talking about your child. But my child was in the car and was not able to go with the people who I allowed him to be with, who I left him with. And I did not leave him unattended. I did not leave him with someone. I made sure they would cover him. So I'm, my okay, question so let me is ask you this. technical. What beef do you have with the department? I just want to make sure I'm not going to have any beef with the department. Okay, because and I just told you what. Are you... You said no. Okay. But I'm just trying to find out the process and the procedures so that in the future, 
Well, I know what they we are. Don't have another I hope not, because I'm really trying to mute this now because people cannot just arbitrarily try to ruin your life and your career by calling DHR on you. And I feel at this point, you guys are used as a tool to ruin my status in the community and my name and the stand that I have in this community. So you can take as a beef as you want to, but see, nobody pulled your son into custody for a false arrest. See, I have a right to resist a false arrest, and I was arrested under false pretenses on yesterday. And when I allowed someone to take my child as the trust of a woman to woman talking about a child, for you guys to take my child out of that person's custody, and put them in your custody and tell me no one talked to me. I didn't know I had to deal with you because I wasn't under your scrutiny. You understand what I'm saying? So that's my frustration. So I'm sorry that you, ma'am, are getting frustrated by my frustration. But you weren't arrested and your child was not detained or, in my opinion, held in custody. Yeah, but I'm thank you for the information. No, I'm not. You just said, what's my beef? No, I said I was not trying to be difficult. I don't like, yes, but you probably wasn't, but you probably frustrated because I'm not going to, I want answers. And sometimes, and sometimes, and the answers that you're asking me for, from law enforcement, you can't answer. I can't answer. And I just wanted to make sure the line between custody and the person well, was not I can even tell my you child. This. As far as DHR is concerned, you don't have a case with us. Okay, I appreciate that, and I want to make sure that's fine. Yeah. Nothing is so. No documents, not going to be any paper trail with my name on there because she made me sign something. And once I sign no. something, it becomes legal documentation. No. I, she was just doing that for her protection to make sure that she had talked to you. Okay. There's not going to be a paper trail. Okay, thank you very much. You're That's welcome. all I wanted to know. Okay.